everyone. I'm Brittany Hyde, today's host of Let's Mana Up. This show is meant to dive into stories of local product entrepreneurs and how they are growing their companies from right here in Hawaii. My guest today is Lauren Shoup, founder of and CEO of Ulumana, based on Oahu. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Yeah. So why don't we start off with your story? How did you get started? Um, so I'm originally born and raised over on the Big Island. Um, after high school, I went to San Diego for a little bit, but knew that wasn't going to be my long-term home. So I moved back here to Oahu and um, was looking for something to do, and I fell into the farmer's markets. So um, kind of what happened, I was selling like jams and jellies and all these like locally made products and doing a bunch of different farmer's markets. And then other um, Big Island vendors started to you know, contact me like, hey, can you help to sell our products too? Like, you know, macadamia nuts, teas, uh, coffees, sea salt, all different types of things. So kind of, we just kind of rolled with it, and then we started selling different products at the farmer's markets, but they were all just um, very local products, and we, I would love doing it, and um, yeah, that's kind of how it all got started. So how did you get introduced to Ulu? Uh, Ulu, I mean, um, again, growing up on the Big Island, it's always been around. Uh, my mom would use it growing up here and there. She was a caterer, so she used it for some events. Um, but I don't know, it's just one of those things, like, it's just... Um, I don't really know how to explain it, but it's just so good to be true, too good mm -hmm. to be true, I guess. Too. I, I, just, I just really like how you can use like every part of the fruit and it grows in abundance and it's, um, it's already growing. You know, it's not mm -hmm. something that we really need to just plant all over the place because it's, it's already growing. Mm -hmm. so, it's a good crop for Hawaii. Yeah, it's a very good crop for Hawaii. Um, so it loves the climate here. It's easy to take care of. It lasts for uh, decades. You know, it can feed families for years. So it's just an all-around great fruit. But um, yeah, and no, it's always just kind of been on my radar of things I wanted to work with. Awesome. So yeah. you found Ulu, very mm -hmm. good crop. You mm -hmm. can do a lot with it. What did you try out first? So, um, so first I tried out Ulu hummus. Yeah, mm -hmm. so uh, to back it up a little bit, um, first I started making hummus. So that was, uh, again, I'm from the farmer's background, uh, farmer's market background. Mm -hmm. So I... Um, I, oh, I guess I realized that no one in Hawaii was making hummus like commercially. So if you go into Safeway, there was like, you know, Sabra's, Boar's Head and all this products, but they're all from the mainland. I'm just like, man, this is crazy. Like no one in Hawaii is making hummus. Like, how is this possible? You know, and I was like, hey, I can do it. You know, I'll give it a shot. Um, so that's what I did. So I just <laughs> walked across to another aisle and grabbed some garbanzo beans and, you know, looked on YouTube or whatever and found some uh uh, recipe and started making hummus. Um, but if, like I said, of course, I'm from the farmer's market world, so I had to be local. That was first thing. So again, I started incorporating like local beets, local sweet potato, local turmeric. Um, I even made like a pineapple one. I made a mushroom one, like all these crazy flavors. Um, and people really liked them. You know, I just gave friends, family, you know, I didn't sell any of them, but it was just friends and family tested out. And um, it was good, um, but it just like, to me, it just wasn't local enough. You know, I really wanted to be like a home run on the, on the you know, local side. Mm -hmm. um, so it kind of went on the back burner for about a year and a half. Um, and then um, I was introduced to an Ulu, uh, Ulu recipe. I was working with uh, the Ulu co-op for a little while, and then they introduced me to the idea of Ulu hummus, and I've never heard of it before. And uh, one thing led to another where I just took my old recipes and married it with, you know, an Ulu hummus idea. And, there you go. Wow. <laughs> Ulu hummus, yeah. So, so you started selling good. that at the farmer's market. Yeah, so that, that's when I'm like, okay, this is, you know, we got it going on now. We, this is about as local as it's going to get. Um, we can get most of the ingredients here, um, or a lot of them here, obviously the ulu. Um, so yeah, then we just started rolling with it. And that's a good thing about um, being in the farmer's market world is I'm exposed to a lot of different customers, a lot of different customer bases and price points and all mm -hmm. the stuff. You can get feedback right on oh, the spot. Oh, instant, instant <laughs> feedback. Like, oh, this is gross. I don't want to eat this. Or, oh, my God, it's really good. Or it's too expensive. Or not, you know, it's just you'll get all kinds of feedback. So that, that to me was, like, just amazing. Um, it's really hard to get, like, you know, instead of spending tons of money in a retail location that you know, we have no idea what's going to go on, you know, mm -hmm. here I am able to introduce it to the farmer's markets and get instant feedback. Do the tourists like it? Uh, do people, you know, in Kailua like it? Do people in the North Shore like it? Like, who even cares about this or if they do care? Um, so I got a lot of great feedback, and it really uh, helped me. Like, okay, people like it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's a doable price point. We can make it work. Let's go. And that's kind of what happened. And so then what was the journey to moving to Oahu, setting up a factory, and actually going for it? Um, so I'm kind of one of those guys, I'm more of a just do it kind of a guy. And, you know, I'm, I'm thinking, I, you know, I'm, I'm thinking ahead and I have plans and things like that, but I'm more of a, we're here, we're, let's go. You know, I don't want to wait. I'm not going to, anyways, I'm just, you know, I'm just into just do it, you know? Mm -hmm. So I feel like you'll learn a lot that way. If it works, it, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. And, hey, at least you tried, but you know, you didn't have to spend a ton of time, like not knowing either way. 
Um, so I just dove straight into it. Um, man, you should have seen my head like three Cuisinarts, like little baby Cuisinarts. Um, and then I was just making like, I think uh, this is the, uh, the hummus here. Um, so they're eight ounces. And I think per Cuisinart, I was making like six or something, you know, so I, it, and then that was a one recipe every time. So just think of weighing all that stuff out, <laughs> trying to make even like a hundred of them. It was just crazy. So I did that for like a, I don't know, a quarter, four months or so. Um, and then luckily, very luckily, I ran into a used, uh, uh, it's called a stand-up cutter mixer. So basically a massive blender. Um, it's about chest high, um, 30 quart, 40 quart, something like that. Um, so luckily I got one of those used on the big island that was shipped over here to me and that saved us, you know, mm -hmm. that, that turned it into an actual business. And again, this was very early on, no labels or, you know, no official labels, just stickers and stuff like that. Just again, farmer's markets. Um, but yeah, once we had that mixer, we really started going. Um, but that, that's just one part of it. Um, the whole other part is like, can I even get enough fruit? Right. Yeah, that, that's a whole, a whole nother uh, subset to the equation. Uh, it's like, is there farmers out there? Can I make a call to anyone? Is it how seasonal really is it? Um, what's what's the process? Because because there's no one I could just make a phone call. Hey, man, drop off five thousand pounds. Like that doesn't exist, or at least didn't exist, especially back then. So you years ago. started to have to build relationships with the farmers. Yeah, that was number one. So that's where we're uh, we're we've been doing that the past three years. But yeah, absolutely, just building relationships with farmers. Like, and, and how is that now? Is it are there big farms of breadfruit, or is it? You know, you're working with individual. Um, mostly it's just individuals. Yeah, mostly it's just individuals. Um, there are some larger farms that do have a steady crop, but still to this day, um, almost all of them is like a, a sub crop. It's like something that they just happen to have, or they grew. They just grew some, or you know, maybe ten trees or so. So it's not like their main focus. Their main focus maybe microgreens or something else, but they do grow ulu on the side. So still to this day, it's um, I'm dealing with a lot of different uh, little far uh, small farmers or you know big farmers, mm -hmm. but big farmers doing other things, not necessarily ulu. So again, we're still working on it, but it's a lot better than it was like three years ago. Yes, that's awesome. Yeah. Well, let's take a look at some of the photos of ulu. Yeah. So this so how is how big are these? Okay. So those guys are roughly about two two and a half pounds. They can range anywhere from like one and a half up to. I mean, there's some big guys that come in at eight pounds, but I would wow. say average is about two and a half, somewhere in there, two to three pounds. Um, so this is the Ma'afala variety, and this is absolutely what we're looking for. So a lot of the times, um, if I have like really small farmers or people that are first time users of ulu or pickers, um, they're not, they don't know exactly what to look for. So that's a whole nother part of it, is just teaching them what, what works for us, because maybe it works for an auntie that's going to do another product, maybe an uh, ulu ice cream or something. So she wants the fruit at a different stage where we need it <clears throat> a little bit harder, um, not as um, ripe, um, you know. So that's a whole other process, teaching them what we need to make our product. So that's been a couple of years in the making as well. But yeah, Ma'afalo, that's the variety we really like, a, sm a small variety that's grown here in Hawaii. So how many pounds now do you get of ulu a year? Um, so we're shooting for anywhere from forty to 50,000 this year. Wow. Um, last year, I think it was like 25 to 30 so in, that, in that range, maybe a little more. Um, so it's really grown. It's grown, yeah. No, every year we're increasing, obviously, um, growing. Um, and then that's more that we can get from farmers because a lot of the trees are young that people have planted in the past like three to five years. So they're really... Uh, getting mature and they're really really starting to grow some fruit now so um that's increasing and there's just the awareness that people are out there looking for ulu like myself is looking for ulu uh that's getting out out there too so yeah, people it. are planting more trees that's incredible yeah and so you know what do you expect to be at next year in terms of pounds? um i mean it could really shoot to the moon or i could say like hey you know a hundred thousand pounds it really just depends and now um as far as ulu in hawaii i'm sure there's well over hundred thousand pounds but it's like accumulating it all you know do they have the proper like handling techniques you know we're not trying to just get anything that's been like not abused fruit but you know it's like properly handled right you know right. um and then um uh, yeah it could be a few hundred thousand pounds you know who, who really knows you know is it still like a big question um but for us personally it's more of like what our uh, machines can handle like what we can physically actually produce with the uh the machines we have right now so that's a big question for us yeah Gotcha. But hopefully double next year, let's say that. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, let's take a look at what you've turned the ulu into. Yeah, yeah. So, so what's this? Yeah, so this is the the, uh, the mixer I was talking about, our original mixer. Uh, we no longer use this one. We actually uh, went to a bigger one, but it's an awesome Hobart mixer that kind of saved us or really created the company. Uh, once we had that, we we're off to the races. Um, but this is our turmeric hummus. This is the first one we've ever made, our original flavor, and it's still our, one of our most popular flavors. 
Uh, but that is all ulu. There's not one garbanzo bean in there. Wow. It tastes just like regular hummus, but um, it's completely made out of breadfruit. Wow, yeah. and that turns into this, what yeah. you have on so, the table. Yeah, um, so we'll show this guy here right now. Yeah, so this is our turmeric hummus. This is our eight ounce. Uh, so this is the size we've been selling for a few years now. Um, we've actually, yeah, about two, two and a half years we've had labels and being in stores and things like that. Um, so yeah, that'll turn into this guy right here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great. Yeah. What else do you make? Um, so the next thing would be our ulu chips. So the way that kind of came about was the abundance of ulu. So, um, you know, again, it's like, who knows how much uli we're going to get. You know, I'm telling every farmer in town, I'll mm -hmm. take it all, you know. And then they really did. They came with all the fruit, you know. And I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. You know, I got more than I can handle, you know. So, again, like I was saying, I'm, I'm a guy that's just like, hey, we're doing this now, you know. <laughs> so I was like, hey, we're making ulu chips. So what you see on screen right now, um, this is our original ulu chip uh, packaging that kind of came out for about three months last year, November, December, and a little bit into January. And we just kind of made it on the fly. We're like, hey, we got so much ulu, we got to do something with it. Um, I don't want to let down the farmers. You know, let's use the food, right? So that was our original packaging um, that, again, we sold for about three years. And it was great. You know, it came in Christmas time. People were giving it as gifts. Um, and I got in a few stores, and they're uh, selling through. And it was a great, um, I don't know, just worked out great. So then we're like, chips, you know. They're so, absolutely <laughs> delicious. Yeah, thank you very much. And they yeah. go perfect with the hummus, yeah, which yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's just one like ulu a, party. It's e amazing. Yeah, one-two combo there, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So again, yeah, this is our different flavors of hummus here. Um, so you, we have the turmeric, the sweet potato, the beets, um, jalapeno, which is definitely my favorite. And then we're going to be uh, launching, well, sort of launching, a, I guess, a new recipe. I had an original uh, sun-dried tomato, we call it, sun-dried tomato mm -hmm. uh, recipe, but um, we have a much better one now, so we're going to like relaunch it, and I think people really like it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. And so you started off with the first round of chips, and now you've evolved it from a packaging standpoint. Yeah. So, so that can was you tell us a little bit about absolutely that. Absolutely huge for us. Yeah. So that's really changed the game. So um, again, we went from the original package packaging to this packaging you see here, which um, like a Met Pet uh, material. So it's like a metalized uh, plastic, I believe is the name. Um, but it's like something you'd buy in a store regularly, right? You buy a bag of chips, like this is the type of material that we packaged in. Um, so this is going to hold the chips a lot longer. So we're shooting for like a 12 month shelf life. Um, again, this is a brand new bag. We've been selling it for about a month now, but this has totally kind of changed the game for us um, as far as like production. Um, because the thing is like we only have six months to make all of these bags. Um, and then we got a storm for the off season, right? Because we can only make, uh, so just FYI, yeah, Ulu is about a six months on, six months off season. And then there's different spikes in the season. Um, we're going through a spike right now where we're just getting calls left and right for fruit. Um, so we got to produce all those bags within about six months. Oh, wow. And then sell them throughout the year. And then again, start making fresh ones in June and July. And so the fact that you guys have developed the chip means that you can sell all year long. Yes. Yeah. So that packaging um, is what's allowing us to do that. So without that packaging, there's there's no way. I mean, the the white packaging you saw before, we're talking two months max, and um, it's you know not as crispy as it originally was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So pretty happy about that. So it's kind of incredible looking at the different starches that Hawaii has to offer mm -hmm. in replacement for potato chips and wheat and all of those sorts of things. Yeah. What would you say are uh, key health benefits or you know, other key things that someone should know about ulu yeah. if they're going to switch. Yeah, so I think number one is grown here. And it's not like we, we need to plow a bunch of land to grow this um, fruit tree. I mean, it grows in people's backyards, as you know. It's all over the place. So one, it's here already. We don't have to ship anything in. Um, it's sustainable. It lasts for years. It's, um, so anyways, there's that part of it. <laughs> uh, number two is it's um, low to medium glycemic, so it doesn't like spike uh, people's blood sugar levels like uh, white bread or like uh, rice or something like that. Um, and then it has a lot more nutrients than uh, rice. I mean, I love rice, don't get me wrong, but at the same time, um, it doesn't have as much nutrients as ulu would. So it has a, ulu has a lot more vitamins and minerals. It has a higher fiber content, higher uh, protein content. Um, so just all around, nutritious-wise, it's just a better product. And again, my favorite thing is it's grown right outside. So mm -hmm. we don't, you know, there's no processing, um, like big processing that needs to happen off island. It's just done right here. So we really like that. Yeah, and it holds a great future for a diversified ag. Oh, yeah. So it's uh, agroforestry. Yeah, so you can uh, plant different crops underneath it. And a lot of people are experimenting with that right now, of what you can uh, uh, plant underneath like an ulu tree that'll really grow um, ground crops things like that so that's that's another great thing too so it doesn't have to be just rows of ulu 
like you'd see rows of corn. It can just be agroforestry where you can mix in other varieties of plants and uh, fruit trees or all the different types of things. Yeah. Wow, yeah, that's so, so promising. Yeah. <laughs> all right, well, we're going to go to break, and we'll see you guys in a minute. Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, host of Beyond the Lines. I was the head coach for the Punahou Boys varsity tennis team for 22 years, and we we're fortunate to win 22 consecutive state championships. This show is based on my book, which is also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about leadership, creating a superior culture of excellence, achieving and sustaining success, and finding greatness. If you're a student, parent, sports or business person, and want to improve your life and the lives of people around you, tune in and join me on Mondays at 11 a.m. as we go Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha. Hi guys, I'm your host Lillian Kumik from Lillian's Vegan World. I'm, I come to you live every second Friday from 3 p.m. And this is the show where I talk about the plant-based lifestyle and veganism. So we go through recipes, some upcoming events, uh, information about health, regarding your health, and uh, just some ideas on how you can have a better lifestyle, eat healthier, and have fun at the same time. So do join me. I look forward to seeing you. and. Uh, Aloha. Hi, we're back with Lauren Shoup, founder of Ulumana. So we were just talking about all the different ways that Ulu can be used and the health benefits. So I wanted to expand on that. What else can be done with Ulu? Yeah. What are you guys thinking about? So that, um, there's a lot of things you can do with it. Uh, one, I really love fries. So the Ulu Co-op, they make some fries. I, um, I believe you can purchase you know for your restaurant ulu fries are amazing they're, they're just so darn good it's crazy like you would never know the difference between french fries or ulu fries they're just they're awesome so i absolutely love those um people make you know mash out of it like uh, like a mashed potato type um you can make that out of ulu some people make ulu poi which is obviously very simple you use like a more mature fruit mix it with water kind of like you would taro right make poi um you can do a lot of people make it like a mac salad kind, um, where it's just, you know, like chunks instead of potatoes. So there's almost endless possibilities, and people make some awesome things out of fritters, just you name it. So mm -hmm. um, there's wow. a lot of, for chefs, there's a lot of possibilities to serve it in restaurants. Uh, ulu mousse, they make ulu mousse, uh, desserts, just all the different types of things. Wow, so the sky's the limit. Yeah, really, no, it's a very versatile fruit, and it uh, really... Uh, sucks up all the flavor um, that you, you give to it. So if you want to give it a certain flavor, it really sucks it up and you, that flavor like shines through. So it, it's a really versatile fruit. So it's such a versatile fruit. What's needed to grow this industry? And what, maybe what have been the challenges in the past? Um, so again, the challenges is just like finding who's growing it, where is it at, how does it grow? It's very seasonal. So they're working on, um, they're working on like maybe different climates, maybe if it grows better in certain areas or different times of year. So it'd be great if there was like a, a ulu crop that came like in February or March when it's a little colder, um, but maybe on a certain side of the island or certain area elevation, that, that may, that's possible. So that's working on that. Um, but I think just a lot of partnerships, everybody working together. Um, I see it as just a win-win uh, for everybody from the farmers to you know manufacturers like us that can process the fruit to the people eating the fruit I mean there's just so it's just such a win-win situation um, that I see a lot of people able to like join the industry if you want to call it um, and just kind of get their feet wet and get mm -hmm. in there and <laughs> get going <laughs> so there's yeah. a lot of farmers out there that maybe aren't using mulu on the farms that probably could be going yeah. forward. Yeah, so I mean, right now, I think, if in my opinion, there's an overabundance of ulu to what's, you know, what people are purchasing to use or eat. Um, so I think just kind of get to that point where we're using all of it's a good start. Um, but yeah, again, just working together, uh, different organizations, kind of uh, figuring out what's the best way to handle it, maybe store it for the off season, um, you know. Incorporating it into menus at yeah. restaurants. Yeah, and... just more menus, more people aware, more people. I think the number, one of the uh, things too is like how to use it. You know, it, it is very versatile, but I may know that, but it may be, maybe you don't know that or someone, a chef doesn't know that yet where um, they can make it into so many things. So it's just a small, short learning curve, but I think that can be quick, you know, that people can learn about how to mm -hmm. use it. So contact Lauren to find home yeah, sure, recipes. Yeah, sure, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that's awesome. Yeah, sure. <laughs> so let's go to the business side. Mm -hmm. So how long have you been working on this? Um, so the company Ulumana started in early to the, uh, January 2017 as a company, but uh, actually on store shelves, not just farmer's market. It was uh, midway uh, through 2017, like June, July 2017. 
And then it was kind of like a slow burn until about uh, the past year where we've really just been cranking. Um, so some of our good accounts uh, is like the military. Um, mm. They're a great place. Uh, we deliver there. And um, so that's been really good to us. Um, we do like down to earth and food lands and we're kind of safe ways. Uh, Tomorrow's, if I didn't say that already, um, mm-hmm. a lot of different locations. So even just continuously growing. Um, and now with the Ulu chips, that's where we're really seeing some like serious expansion or uh, promise for the future, I should mm-hmm. say. And yeah. so you were just at the Ulu Festival on Maui. Where you I were was. Getting... That was awesome. Yeah, there's so many p- different people, again, doing you know different dishes with Ulu. I didn't, honestly, I didn't really get a good chance to walk around too much. Uh, I was busy just, <laughs> you know, selling and talking and doing my thing. But um, no, there's so many people doing and they really care about the fruit. Um, so I think the that's one cool thing about Ulu is people care. You know, it's not just a crop. It's not just a food. It's like people really care about it. So that's pretty awesome, too. Yeah, that's um, awesome. But yeah, no, on the business side, I think there's a lot of ways to expand, make new products. Um, I mean, there's just so many things. It's, it's crazy, yeah. And so what have been helpful resources for you along the way? Helpful resources. Um, I'm definitely a guy that asks questions. So I didn't do the whole school route or college or whatnot. So I'm the guy that's just, hey, so how did you uh, how did you get in there? Or how did you do that? You know, and I feel like people, maybe it's just Hawaii, I don't know, but people seem to be pretty nice and, you know, help me along the way. Um, so just talking, you know, working with you guys obviously is amazing. Um, you guys are opening the doors to a lot of networking possibilities and people that, you know, have done bigger businesses before. Um, yeah, talking with like uh, investors and things that we need to show for future growth, you know, what investors may want to see. Um, and you name it. A lot of schools, I mean, I'm working with like uh, KCC, uh, Food Safety, they've helped. UH has helped. Um, I know I'm missing so many people right now, but it's just, you know, I just ask everybody everything. So, you know, it's just endless amount of... uh, Yeah, and it's great to be in that collaborative environment where people want to see the succeed. Yeah, yeah, no, because they, yeah, they want to see the item grow, right? So Mm -hmm. then they do say grow, and then they're more willing to help again, you know, or help more. So that's really cool. So it's not something I'm just asking questions, and then, you know, we're remaining stagnant. We're growing with the help that we're getting. So that's that's what's going Mm -hmm. on. Really win-win. Yeah, yeah, it's all win-win for everybody in Hawaii and the economy and the whole thing. And what about on the manufacturing side? You've grown your equipment. Mm-hmm. Have there been helpful resources on that side? Um, again, it's just kind of talking with, uh, you know, we're obviously really small. We've been using a lot of used equipment, but just talking with people. Um, yeah, because honestly, with the chips, too, I was making it with a meat slicer. <laughs> that was that's why that was one of the main reasons why I didn't want to do the chips is because it was physically, uh, all the physical labor, and it was just me just going like this for hours. But then once I found like these new machines and I'm like, oh, there's stuff that already does this already. You know, this just opened my eyes to all these different things. So, um, yeah, just uh, equipment salesman guys or uh, Bar Green. We've got a lot of equipment from them, too, like new new stuff. And, um, yeah, just help like that. And, mm-hmm. yeah. Have there been some key lessons you've learned along the way? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. a more, lot of more than a few, yes. Um, <laughs> yeah, key lessons. Um, I would just say, personally, I just I think I have like a crazy amount of belief um, in whatever I guess I'm doing at that moment in time. I and mean, that being said, I've done things. I've had fish businesses that didn't succeed, and you know, uh, food trucks that didn't succeed. So this isn't like just a first home run. Like that's that's not like I always love the thing when people think it's like success, 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 failure, success, success. I'm like, no, no, it's not like that. Maybe you, maybe it's like failure, 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 success, failure, 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 success, you know? So you got like right. two good ones and all the bad ones. So that's kind of been my story. But it's yeah. failure learning, failure yeah, learning. That, that's, yeah, yeah, that should <laughs> that be the key. Yeah. That success. yeah, so you could even swap out the word failure for just learning. So it's like learn, 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 success, learn, 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 success, you know? So right. um, this isn't definitely not my first crack at, you know, business, I guess. But it's important not to be afraid of those failures. Oh, oh, yeah. No, it's just the only way to learn is just do it. You know, I mean, it's so cliche, just do it, right? But um, I really think that's the way to go. Just get it done, get in there, um, see what's going on. You know, if it doesn't work, hey, it doesn't work. There's a million other things to do. Mm-hmm. Um, but if it does work and, it, you know, everyone's happy and it's a win-win, like, let's let's do it, you know? So, man, I don't key lessons, I don't know. I just say just do it. You know, just <laughs> believe. Just have a crazy amount of belief and you'll you'll know pretty soon right. if it, it's a good I also like the example of the farmer's market, right? That you have that validation. Mm-hmm. You know, I come from a technology background where we talk about the lean startup. Uh, and how are you getting your product out there and getting it validated by real customers? Yes. And that's what you were doing, yeah, which no, is awesome. Honestly, it gave you the foundation to grow. Yeah, without that, I, again, I don't know what we can do because, like, yeah, I'm instantly, like, we do, like, up to 12 farmer's markets a week in all different locations, all different demographics and uh, um, 
different brackets, you know, um, income brackets, things like that. So we see like who's really buying it, you know, mm -hmm. and we really get a good idea of where on the island and um, that's like Hawaii is like a microcosm of what's going on anywhere else, right? So you get to test all these different areas really, really fast. So honestly, without that, I, I really don't know what we would have done. Yeah, I, yeah Farmers Market has been great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we're coming to the end of the show. But I would love to know what's the future of Ulumana? Future of Ulumana? I mean, we just definitely want to uh, continue to grow, make connections, work with um, everyone in the new Ulu industry, I guess I'm going to call it. Um, so we want to, again, yeah, expand our hummus, expand our Ulu chips, maybe come out with some new products. Um, we really like the uh, shelf stable aspect of the Ulu chips. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been dealing, obviously, the hummus is, uh, you know, needs to be temperature controlled. And that for a small business these days with the food safety, it's, it's very hard. I mean, we're doing it, um, but it's definitely not easy and it's not cheap to do. Um, so maybe explore like the shelf stable aspects of Ulu. Um, but yeah, just continue to work with everyone we can possibly talk with. And I'm, I'm trying to talk with everyone I can possibly talk with mm -hmm. right now, you know, just get different ideas. So. Yeah. yeah. So expand within Hawaii through stores, hotels, restaurants. Yep. No, all of the above. Uh, our, our game is definitely the retail market. We make ready to eat Ulu products. So mm -hmm. um, our game is basically I want you to grab our products and just eat it right now. You don't have to heat it up or cool it down or cook it or whatnot. So that's kind of what we're up to. Uh, but yeah, maybe expand And I've to seen people do that. Made in Hawaii, people were buying it and eating it right on the yeah. spot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I love that. You know, like here's awesome hummus, here's a bag of chips. <laughs> Go eat, you know. Um, so yeah, you don't have to do too much to it. But yeah, that's our game is ready to eat products. So expand on that, expand on stores. Um, get into larger places, you know, obviously mm -hmm. the Costco's and places like that, you know, that'd be future. And what uh, about mainland is. expansion? Are you looking at that? Absolutely. Now, so that's the thing with our hummus is it's much harder because obviously we have to ship a frozen or a chilled product, which is not the best thing if we're making it, you know, it's really expensive to make still uh, here in Hawaii. Um, so yeah, that's why our Ulu chips, yeah, we can go online with it now. We have e-commerce. Um, we can ship it to stores in California, which I'm sure we'll be working on soon. But right now it's Ulu season. I'm absolutely just bogged down with. I was cutting 400 pounds of fruit right before I came here. Oh, so wow. that's what I'm doing right now. Is it's Ulu season, so I can only do so much. Yeah. So make it now. Yeah, make it now. Yeah. Then Worry about sell it, it later. Yeah. 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 That's awesome. Yeah. Well, Lauren, thank you so much for joining us on the show. Yeah. Thank you. And we'll be back with more stories of entrepreneurs in future weeks. Thank you so much.